kind of what your goals are um, and then why you think emotional intelligence is important as a leader. Uh, why do you think uh, it is important to be emotionally intelligent as a leader? And while you guys are putting you guys getting your responses together, I'll just say that over the years, I've been uh, working for Chick-fil-A for over 20 years. Um, there's another 20 year veteran on here who is going to be actually presenting. And she can tell you and I can tell you that emotional intelligence in the workplace has looked differently for, for both of us. But we both realize that emotional intelligence is something that we all need to get better at. And we all need to uh, just just have more awareness around if we're going to continue to pursue our own personal goals and pursue our own professional goals. Um, and so, like I said, this presentation is going to be brought to you guys by uh, TPE, which is, this is our coaching company. Uh, we are, uh, are coaches who have real world experiences um, and who are looking to help people uh, pivot into their next. What and, and again, if that's helping your operator, that's helping uh, the the owner of the QSR that you're working for, or and ultimately reaching towards your own goals. We actually have uh, about three or four people in our pipeline right now who are pursuing the opportunity of being an operator. Um, and our coaches feel really comfortable and confident that we're pushing them in the right direction. So if this is something that you want to participate in, uh, we'll have some more verbiage and some more information about this towards the end of the presentation. Or how can you get connected with us? How can we help you uh, not only become a better leader um, in the area of emotional intelligence, but also to continue to grow in the area of um, just being a better leader overall? And so not, you know, like I said, today's today's session is going to be uh, steered and driven by uh, Giovanna and by Neff. Uh, Giovanna has been around uh, Chick-fil-A for over 20 years. Uh, she is uh, what her team and staff calls her uh, the chaos coordinator. Um, and she's also uh, by category, uh, the gavel. And so I, I feel like she is a strong leader um, for her team. And she has been an excellent coach here at TPE. Um, all of her clients, all the people that she's coached, I've seen a tremendous growth in them uh, on a personal and professional level. And so Giovanna will be uh, anchoring uh, one portion of this conversation. Then we also have uh, Neftali Franco. Uh, Neftali is what I like to call the Swiss Army knife man. He is just, uh, he is everything that we need um, a leader to be. And he is really helping a lot of our leaders, particularly our leaders who are ESL, as, that's English as a second language. And so he definitely does a tremendous job in making sure that um, uh, TPE is represented in, in, in an Espanol uh, standpoint. Um, and he and he does a, a beautiful job at that. Um, Ashley Allison, she was one of the presenters from our last Lead Better. Uh, she is the glue around here. She is the get her done -er. She keeps us all together from an administrative standpoint. Um, and and she just makes sure that we stay on target with the things that we want to get done. Because um, some of us, I'll speak for myself, uh, you know, I, I'm Alex and the group calls me the visionary. And as the visionary, sometimes the vision can get really big and actually does a, a great job of making sure that we stay um, in, 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 in a realistic sense. And so uh, between the four of us, uh, we all have clients who we are looking to, that we are actively helping uh, get better and from a coaching standpoint, from a leadership standpoint. Um, and you'll see the four of us um, uh, on the line today in leading future lead betters uh, as we continue to try to help um, you all you know, as leaders get better each and every day. If you're not a part of Leader Square, and this would be the last thing I'll say before we uh, officially jump into our uh, presentation. But if you are not a part of Leader Square, uh, Leader Square is our community, exclusive community. It's not on Facebook. It's not on Instagram uh, where we put content up that uh, that speaks to the things that we're going through as leaders on a day to day basis that speaks that hopefully speaks to situations that you all see inside of your restaurant, inside of your organization. And these things are all designed to help you uh, get better. Um, and so I would encourage you all, uh, if you're not a part of Leader Square, go to TPEnow.com and join Leader Square. Um, be on the lookout for maybe a promo code for access to that uh, group coming in the next couple of weeks. If you're a part of our email chain and you're getting email communications with us, you, you'll probably be able to take advantage of that. Um, I don't want to uh, take too much of our time to make sure we stay on time and respect you all this time. I know it's a Sunday. If you are a part of the world's most caring company, Sundays are precious. And so we want to make sure we honor our time and honor the things that we want to do. Um, I see we got somebody on here from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and you're here to learn about um, 
emotional intelligence. And I love I love your perspective on, in, in your comment. Thank you so much for commenting. And please, please, please do not be afraid to uh, ask questions. Do not be afraid to um, uh, to to interact with us. We want this to be an interactive section session session. We don't want us just to be here talking. Uh, we want to know what you guys think. And so our facilitators, Neff and Giovanna, will be asking questions. There will be a poll in the chat. Uh, so if you have, you know, so just make sure your chat is open, you know, uh, put those questions in there. We'll do our very best towards the end to get to those as much as possible. But without further ado, I'm going to hand this over uh, to Neff and he's going to be kicking us off uh, with our with our initial uh, session here. Hello, guys. Thanks again for everybody being able to take time of your Sunday and be able to join us today. Today, we're going to talk uh, through emotional intelligence. There's four pillars to emotional intelligence that uh we're going to use to kind of talk through different things uh we're going to use this book called emotional intelligence 2.0 it's written by dr travis Branberry and dr gene greaves um and they have really practical tools on how to how to be more well aware of our situations of who we are of how we come across and today we're going to discuss uh two pillars uh we're going to talk through the first one which is self-awareness and the second one, which is self-management. The other, uh, the third one and the fourth pillar for emotional intelligence is social awareness and relationship management. And today, Giovanna and I are going to be going over the first two and going through a couple tools and a couple examples of what that looks like in our lives, things that maybe you and I have done in the past uh, that we didn't realize. And hopefully through the content that we're able to provide today, we'll be able to give you some tools to be able to better uh, those areas in your leadership so that you can be a better leader for others and be a better leader for yourself in your own personal life. So uh, there's going to be a poll on there. And so really, we want to know what pillar of emotional intelligence do you need to work on in 2024? And maybe you can't answer this right now. Maybe you can answer it towards the end uh, of the content, but we want to be able to know what area do you think personally that you need to work on in order to improve as a leader? All right, so Ashley's going to put that in the poll. You got it, Ash? All right, good. So if you'll pull up um, on, your, on your screen, there is a little triangle square circle thing. <laughs> it's in the bottom right corner. And if you pull that up, that will be where the poll is located. So we want everyone to answer the poll um, around what pillar do you feel like you need to work on? We're going to talk about self-awareness, self-management today, but our next lead better um, is going to be around social awareness and relationship management. And as Alex said, um, if you have not joined our Leaders Square, which is our way to communicate with leaders uh, day in and day out, we do make posts daily, every other day. Um, we do have a, a sister page that is for TPS Espanol and Neff does all the work around that. Um, but if you haven't joined, uh, feel free to join because we'd love for you guys to see what's going on. Um, we do post leadership quotes, leadership videos, Alex, um, I call him the dose man because that's, that's his, uh, he used to do something called the daily dose, but now he just calls it the dose. Um, and so he puts a lot of, uh, good content on leader squared. So if you haven't joined, um, he'll have more information on that at the end. But we're first going to talk about self-awareness. Um, and it's funny when I've, I've actually been studying a lot of emotional intelligence since we were focusing on this this month. Um, and it's funny, I told Neff when I came into his house today, which Neff and I are actually recording together, and we don't normally do this, but I told him I'm doing it from now on because his setup is so much better than mine. Um, but when I came in, I was like, man, there's so much I need to learn about um, emotional intelligence. And I think self-awareness is the start of that, um, but it's definitely not the end. It's just the start. And so the first thing I wanted to talk about with self-awareness is kind of defining it. And I made up this uh, definition. <laughs> uh, and and Neff and I were talking about it. I was like, okay, self-awareness, it's knowing who you really are not who you think you are or who you want to be. Um, I don't know how many of you guys have read Atomic Habits, but one of the things he talks about in Atomic Habits is actually like speaking into existence what you want. Um, but 
this is not self-awareness. That's not self-awareness. That is a good tool to, to get you to where you want to go. But being self-aware means that you know who you really are. And in the book, it talks about like peeling away an onion, like getting to the core of who you are. Um, and so it's, I think that definition is key is knowing who you really are, not who you think you are or who you want to be. Um, I think this is hard in our society. And the reason I say that is because we're like flooded with images of who we think we want to be or who we should be, um, but they're not actually who we are. A good example of this, and this is something that I, I, I shop a lot online. Um, I have two boys. And so I do a lot of clothes shopping online. Specifically, I would say Old Navy is my, is my go-to uh, because it's, it's cheaper. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the pictures that they have of the clothes are on models. And I love one thing about Old Navy that I love is that you can actually select the size of the model. And it's like size 4, size 12, size 8. Mm -hmm. And I'm a size 8, 10. And so if I look at the clothes on the model that's a size 4, it's not going to look the same on me as it does on the model. And so that's one thing. Like that's just a practical example of like we a lot of times see these images that we we want to be or, you know, I'd love to be a size four. I used to be a size four when I was in high school. I'm not in high school anymore. Um, but we have this picture of what we want to be. And a lot of times that's who we really think we are. And that's not who we are. And so a practical that's an example on the shopping side. But pertaining to emotional intelligence, a lot of our emotions have been hardwired into who we are. Um, and they're hardwired by past experiences, our upbringing. I would say even down to, I have a, a I have a bachelor's degree in science. And so, which I think is kind of weird that I work at Chick-fil-A. Uh, but I, I think that's even down to our genetic makeup. Like we have who we are is like hardwired into us that nature versus nurture. But the key to controlling our emotions in different situations is first understanding the deepest part of who we are and why we are who we are. So I'm going to, um, I, I love Craig Groeschel. I watch, I listen to every one of his podcasts or watch them on YouTube. Um, and he, he made a statement one time that stories stick and facts fade. And so I tell a lot of stories to try to help explain what I'm trying to say. Um, but I would say I struggle with emotional intelligence. Um, and self-awareness. And I think a lot of it has to do with how I grew up. Um, so growing up, I grew up in a really great loving home, but I grew up in a home where my parents kind of were like, suck it up, buttercup. Like that's a phrase that I heard a lot. And so I kind of grew up not really being able to express emotions or being afraid to express my emotions. And it really has affected my leadership. So I started um, leadership. I would say I was a leader in um, high school on my volleyball team. Um, I played college volleyball as well. And I was the team captain my junior and senior year of college. And that just kind of has played throughout. So I've been, I've led in a lot of capacities. And I would say the last three years is when I've really started to embrace emotional intelligence. Um, and I, I, I guess that I thought that I knew who I was and I would have said I'm not an emotional person, but in actuality, we're all emotional and those emotions are going to come out. And so you've got to figure out how to embrace the emotions and, and lead, have those emotions really help you to lead. And so I actually uh, made a kind of created a quote for myself that was like around emotions is, and I said, as a leader, you have to let your emotions lead you to really lead well. And so you're taking those emotions that you're having as a leader and you're, for me, I have to marinate on them. Like I can't just, sometimes things come out really harsh. And so I've learned that I've got to say, okay, let me, let me take that in. Let me think about it. Let me marinate on it. And then let my, let me take the emotions that I had around that situation and, and let me learn to lead better. Um, so, so I, I would say I'm an emotional baby. That's what I tell people. I'm like, I'm still learning how to be more emotionally intelligent. Um, and so I think the key is self-awareness and understanding that I'm not great with my emotions. And so I've got to really figure out how to, um, how to use those emotions to lead my team better.
So there's a list of strategies um, in the book and there's, I think there's 15 of them, but there's two that I'm going to focus on today. Um, the, it's it's uh, strategy number two and strategy number, I think it's number 15. 15. Yeah, number 15. So these are the two that I would say I need to work on the most um, as a leader. And so this is, this is transparency for all of you guys out there. These are the two I need to work on the most. Um, but the first one is number two, it's observe the rip ripple effect from your emotions. I want you to picture throwing a rock. You can kind of see it there. Okay. For me, it was skipping rocks. When I was a kid, um, I used to love to skip rocks on the water. And so you would throw the rock in the water and it would create a ripple effect. Um, our emotions do the same thing. Literally, our emotions do the same thing. Or you can even think about just dropping a rock in the water and how that it creates a ripple effect. And the saddest part about that kind of when I started thinking about that was our emotions, they affect the people closest to us the most. So that ripple, if you actually are looking at the, the screen right now, like the, the closer you are to where the rock fell, the harder you're going to feel the ripple. Well, that's the same thing. So for me, I say my poor husband sometimes. <laughs> He's the one who, uh, when I have a bad day, he gets to feel the ripple effect of my emotions the most. Um, and when I think about leading my team, I would say that my team, the, the four people that I lead that are closest to me, they feel the ripple the most around emotional intelligence. Um, now, I wouldn't say, um, in our organization, we have about 180 ish team members. Um, and I wouldn't say that that 170 nights team member that just joined our team three weeks ago, I wouldn't say that they don't feel the ripple effects of my leadership. I would just say they wouldn't feel them as much because they're on the outskirts. But the higher you are in leadership, the more you have to realize that you have to be emotionally intelligent. You have to be self-aware because the entire team feels the ripple effects of your emotions. And so some key things with that is, I, and there's two key facts that I want you to take away from this is one, watch how your team reacts to your emotions immediately. So when you're talking to a leader, a team member, look at how they respond. And I want you to look at how they respond in two ways. One, how do they respond with their words? One. And two, how do they respond with their body language? We were just actually having a conversation about this before we got on Lead Better today, <laughs> but it's like 7% is verbal the other 93 percent is body language and so you've got to watch how your team responds to your emotions and then the second thing that i think is key when it's becoming more self-aware and, and and figuring out that ripple effect is asking for feedback and this is one area where i feel like i do a really good job i ask for a lot of feedback but this the, the second part of that is you actually have to take the feedback and not defend yourself um, and I think that is our first, our first response when somebody brings something negative to us is like, oh, I got to put up a wall. I got to defend myself. But if you really want to grow in self-awareness and you, if you want to grow in emotional intelligence, take the feedback in and, and, and really like put a wall up for a minute and just let it sink in before you respond so that it doesn't look like, oh, they were asking for feedback and now she's just going to give me all the reasons why she did what she did. Yep. And so first thing is I would just watch how your team reacts to it. And, and that can be body language and, and through words. But then the second one is, is ask for feedback and really take that feedback and try to get better when it comes to self-awareness. The second one that I want to talk about is get to know yourself under stress. And this is one that I, you know, we have a lot of stressors in life. Uh, and I want you to, the picture here is a mountain, okay? We all have a mountain of stress. And this is what stress looks like in your life. You just keep putting more things on your plate or on, on, on your leadership level or uh, on yourself at home. And, and it creates stressors, right? So I'm going to give you a list. And I didn't put this list on the screen, so I'm sorry about that. But there's, I have a list of kind of personal and professional stresses that we all feel. So personal, illness, parenting, money health, holidays. I thought that one was interesting. When I was researching, I was like, you know what? We all feel stressed around the holidays because we, we've got all these responsibilities. So holidays, time management, marriage, relationships with friends and family, housing, you know, making a house payment. 
that's a stressor. Um, professional, professional stresses, climbing the ladder. I mean, we all think about what's next in our profession. Uh, relationships with your boss and coworkers, performance. How am I doing? How am I performing? What does my boss think about my performance? Deadlines. I know that's one that a lot of people stress about is like, oh man, I got to get these 10 things done and I don't have enough time to do them. I'm to give y'all a, a clear picture of who I am. And this is a vulnerable moment for me. I'm going <laughs> to share some of current stressors in my life. Um, my son, my oldest son, he's going to be 16 in uh, about 34 days. And he has his permit and he's about to start driving. And that's something that I'm worried about is like putting him on the road. Like I, you know, like he's going to be responsible for his own life, but for other people's lives yeah. and my eight year old's life in the car. And so that's currently something that I'm stressed about. Um, parenting. I stress about parenting a lot. Um, running uh, a, a business, a couple businesses, actually. Uh, am I spending enough time with my kids? Am I spending equal time with my kids? Um, I'm about to coach soccer for my my youngest son, and I told y'all I play college volleyball. I don't know much about soccer, uh, but they needed a coach, and so like, are the kids going to learn anything? Um, professional stresses. I have clients right now. Like, are they getting enough attention? Are they being able to drive results in their area of the business? Um, having enough time to spend with each one of my leaders. I feel like a lot of times I don't have ample time and is each leader getting enough quality time and are the things that i'm supposed to be doing in my role am i focusing on those things or am i focusing on things that are in other people's role um and so i think those are current stresses in my life but one thing um that i think about when i think about stresses is i think about what are things that are in my control and what are things that are outside of my control and if it's something that's outside of my control it's not something that i necessarily stress about anymore because uh, i had a leader one time a good example of this is like the the one day we were at work and the power went out and everybody started freaking out oh my goodness what are we gonna do and i was like okay calm down it's all right like we're, we're gonna handle this and they're like how are you so calm and i'm like well i can't make the power come back on and so at that point, I'm like, that's not something I'm going to stress about. I'm going to do what I can do to fix the situation, but I'm not going to sit there and stress about it. And I think one key phrase, and I know, Alex, uh, you would you would also attest to this, but like when I first started working 25 years ago, like one phrase was leave it at the door. That's not reality. Like that phrase shouldn't even exist. Leave whatever it was at the door. No, you're bringing all that stuff with you. And every single team member is bringing their stuff with them, both personal and professional stressors. And, and so I would say, acknowledge it. Don't leave it at the door, acknowledge it and be, and as a leader, be vulnerable enough to say, Hey, like I'm struggling because these are some things that are going on in my life. And so I think that would really help when it comes to emotional intelligence around even your team, understanding where you're at and, and being able to, to, um, to help you with those things. So I, I have a list of things that when you're going through stressors, you're going to experience. And sometimes we forget like, hey, uh, you know, I have a lot of things on my plate or I'm, I'm pretty stressed out. But there are going to be some emotions that show up when you're stressed out. Irritable, anxious, fearful, afraid, depression, unable to enjoy normal day to day activities. There's also physical responses to stress. And some of those physical responses are trouble sleeping stomach or digestive issues, rash, chest pains, headaches. And when I looked at these two lists, I was like, man, I've, I've experienced some of those things uh, recently. But some key points to be able to, to combat those stress is I have four things. One, recognize the signs of stress. Um, that's the first thing to be, be able to overcome it. Two would be rest. Like at some point you have to say, Hey, enough is enough. And I need some rest. And, and, and you got to say, Hey, I just got to take, take a break. I got to take a couple hours off um, and do things that you enjoy in that time frame. Um, three, what can I control and what's outside of my control? Ask yourself that question. Um, you, you really shouldn't stress about things that are outside of your control. There's no reason for that. Um, and then I think the fourth thing, and this is one that I'm really working on right now is you get to decide what you take on and what you don't. 
everyone's capacity is different. What I can handle versus what somebody else can handle are different. They're at different seasons in life. They're at different places in life. But you have to set boundaries and limits on your stressors. And so to me, when I think about that key self-awareness is I got to be aware enough that my leadership is key in the lives of my family, in the lives of the people that I work with. And so I've got to set some boundaries so that I can show up in the best way possible. And so Ashley's going to put this in the comments. I want you to comment. What are some areas of your life that you currently stress about that create negative emotions that are outside of your control? And I, the reason I want you to write those down is because I want you to let those go. In that moment, when you type that out in the next 10 seconds, I want you to type in some things that are outside of your control that you're currently stressed about that you need to let go. And I want you to literally release them, like take a deep breath, breathe in, breathe out, and release those stresses that are outside of your control. Can you, can you click the comments enough so I can see the comments? All right. I'll even put, I'm going to put some of my stressors. I'll put my 16 year old about to drive. I honestly, I can't control that. And so that's something that I just need to, I've done the best I can teaching him how to drive. And, you know, he is probably going to make mistakes. I had two wrecks when I was in between 17 and 19 and, and I got a ticket and I'm still alive and I, I'm still making it. So I, I know that there are some stressors in my life that I just have to let go as well. All right, now Neff's gonna kick us off in the self, uh, in the, the self, -management. self management area. So, self awareness is the first step when it comes to emotional intelligence, and the second step is self management. And there's a lot of ways that we can look at this, a lot of ways that we can define it, and there's a lot of things that self management affects. And we'll talk through a couple of them. But first, we want to define what self-management is. And simply, self-management is what happens when you act or when you do not act. It depends on your self-awareness and is the second major part of personal competence. And so you choosing not to do anything is self-management or you choosing to act upon something is self-management. And we have so many thoughts and we have so many actions every single day unconsciously and subconsciously uh through some research done they've said we have over 30,000 thoughts every single day and that is a crazy amount of thoughts that go that flow in and flow out of our brains and some of them are unconscious and some of them are conscious but we choose whether we act or do not act upon all those decisions upon all those thoughts and upon all those emotions that we experience every single day and so when we think about self-management we can think of a volcano i think there's a illustration right there and in this book uh emotional intelligence 2.0 they make this depiction between us humans and a volcano and the similarities but also the, this one main distinction between us and a volcano. A volcano has so many things happening inside of it, rumbling, uh, tremors, uh, things that are bubbling inside before there's an actual eruption happening. And at some point after it's reached, uh, you know, after so many reactions have happened inside of the volcano, an explosion happens and lava comes out. And for us as humans with our emotions, we we're kind of similar in that way. Things don't usually just throw us off into the edge. There's usually things that have been building up inside of us, things that somebody says, things that somebody else did, um, and that we do, don't say anything. We just kind of keep them inside. And at some point, somebody comes and says one little thing and it just kind of tips us over the edge and we go off on that person now very similar to the volcano situation except that the volcano has no control over what's happening inside us as humans we 
have a choice. We can make the choice to act upon or not act upon those feelings that we have inside as humans. And so we can choose to have a conversation. We can choose to say, hey, I didn't really appreciate the way that this was said or the way that you approach the situation, or you can choose to not say anything. And so when it comes to self-management, it really boils down to what you choose to act upon or will you choose to not act upon. And there's, again, a plethora of strategies that this book goes through. There's actually a little bit over 15 self-management strategies. And today we're going to just go over two, kind of like we did with self-awareness. And the two that we're going to go over is creating an emotional versus reason list and speak to someone who is not emotionally invested. And so when we go through the first one, which is creating an emotional versus a reason list, uh, for those of y'all that are not very familiar with how your brain works, are any things that happen to us that are emotions, they go through the limbic system in our brain. And so our feelings and emotions, they kind of go through our uh, spinal cord and they first hit through your limbic system, which is in charge of feelings and emotions. It's what gives you that gut feeling. It's what tells you like when you're sad, depressed, anxious. And then at the very end, it hits our, the cortex. Um, your cerebral cortex is the part of your brain responsible for rational thinking. And so it's important to note the order that that goes in because most of the time when something is said to us that we may not have liked when somebody did something that we did not, you know, uh, think was correct. The first instinct is to have an emotional response. That's just the human nature uh, in us to react in an emotional way. And that's because the way that we're wired, it's not because you're just choosing. It's just that's how we were created. Uh, but the problem is that a lot of us are not able to know those emotions and be able to define what it is that we're really feeling to then be able to actually create an action from that. And so when there's uh, a problem going on, a situation that you may find yourself in that you're having a really hard time dealing with, thinking about, or trying to figure out with somebody else, it's really helpful to be able to write down simply in a piece of paper put a, a line down the paper and write out all the emotions that are you're feeling and then all the reasons, the logical things to why you're feeling those emotions um, to know, are you overreacting or what is it that your rational part of your brain is telling you that you really need to take care of? Um, and it's not just simply an overreaction. And so the way that, that we put it is, where are your emotions clouding your judgment and where is your reason for ignoring important cues from your emotions? So we, we can take uh, decisions in our life that are clouded when we go based solely on emotions and do not take time to step out of the situation and really think rationally over what is it that really happened? What was it that, what role did I have in the situation, what role did the other person have in the situation, and what was the outcome instead of taking an emotional approach and just letting that guide everything that happens around us. There's a reason why people tell us do not make decisions, important decisions, when you have um, intense emotions like happiness or anger. You know, a lot of times or we get angry or we're sad, we're depressed, and we make these decisions based off of those feelings. And most of the time, you end up regretting that later on in your life because you made a decision based on an emotion without you really processing the situation that was going on. And you can look up on, if you like Google search an emotions wheel, um, or yeah. an emotions list, you can Google search it and there's an emotions wheel or some lists that come up and you can even take those lists and you can, and use the list to help you define the emotions. Cause I think sometimes too, when you're in like tense situations or even like really joyful situations, you have a hard time writing out those emotions. And so there's a lot of really good tools on the internet that you can search up to really like, I actually, um, for my, 
the clients that I coach, I have an emotions uh, sheet that I talk to them about in the beginning. And I'm like, how are you doing prof uh, personally and professionally? And sometimes those emotions align and sometimes they don't. And yeah. so I would say like, if you have a hard time defining your emotions, which for emotional babies like me, that is, uh, I have a really rough time with that. Um, if you have a hard time with that, uh, look it up online and get that emotions wheel and then put it in front of you and then circle, circle the emotions that, that you're feeling and then write out your, your reasons why you're feeling those things. Yeah. So the way the book categorizes this is in five different emotions. And for example, under anger, a lot of us use the word angry to generalize how we're feeling. We say, Hey, I'm really angry because of this, but there's many different things under angry that could be happening. You could feel betrayed. Um, you could feel frustrated. You could be irritated. Um, and there's different intensities to that. And being able to clearly communicate what you're actually feeling is going to get you to be able to get a better result at the end of the day, instead of just generalizing, I'm just angry or I'm just mad. Um, Cause then it, it doesn't really get you nowhere. So and then the next one is speak to someone who is not emotionally invested. So I've shared this with a couple leaders before, um, and it's something that we very easily do. And sometimes you may not even think about it and you just do it. Uh, but usually when we have a problem with somebody, we tend to go to the people that we know subconsciously are going to take our side. We say, hey, so-and-so made me so mad today and I just can't believe what they did. But you already know that that person doesn't like that person. So they're going to say, yeah, man, that's horrible. Like, I can't believe they would have ever done that. And you're like, I know. You're like, that's horrible. Like, they just need to go. We should probably make a plan and get them fired. Like, you just start coming up with this whole plan because you know that that person also doesn't like that person. And emotionally, that is not very healthy. It's not, and it's not fair to the other person. Um, so when you have an issue with somebody or something, you really want to seek out somebody that's not emotionally invested in that for you to get a neutral position over the issue or situation that you're in. Um, oftentimes when you go to somebody that is emotionally invested in it or you know agrees with you, oftentimes it just turns into gossip and then there's no real action and no real progress uh, when you go and seek out that kind of feedback from other people. And although it might be uncomfortable to go and sit with somebody that you know does not agree with what you're about to say or somebody that's going to have to play devil's advocate for you, you'll probably be thankful for that later on that you went and grabbed fresh feedback from somebody else that was not emotionally invested in that situation that that you were dealing with at that moment so but i think that's where coaching yeah. coaching can come into play um i know for sure like my life coach uh i get to bring those situations to to them and i get i get good feedback on how i could have handled the situation better um and i think as a coach that's one thing that i really focus on with with my clients is like when they bring me things that are going on in their organization or in their personal life and, and you know they're frustrated or they're upset the first question i ask is what role do you play in that situation and i think that's a really good question to ask especially for you like you guys who are leaders and i know that there's people coming to you doing that same thing that you might not be emotionally invested in something that's in their personal life that's a really good question that you can ask the like first is, okay, well, what role do you play in that situation? Or what role do you play in, uh, in that group of people? Or how do, how could you have done something different to get a different result? Those are really, really key things for you to ask. Um, and that's one reason that I just really love coaching and I like being coached by someone because that's just an outside perspective on situations where you're so emotionally invested and a lot of times that emotionally like the the fact that you're so emotionally invested you you're not thinking clearly and yep. so it's a clear perspective on how you can look at the situation differently so seeking that outside perspective is so important but also make sure when you seek outside perspective that one you're ready to listen like i, I always For say sure. If you go ask you know if you're if you're going just to gossip about it just don't even do it it's not worth it 
Um, but be ready, ready to get feedback, be ready to get sometimes harsh feedback on your leadership. Like yep. you might, you might hear some things you don't want to hear. Um, and then I think the third thing is, is make sure the person that you're asking has good morals and values because, and, and values the same things that you do, because if not, you probably won't come out of the situation the same as you would with somebody who does have good moral judgment. So always make sure that you're, you're, you're asking people who, who, you know, have a good set of values and a good moral compass. For sure. So the last thing for emotional management, self uh, management, which is not, the, the book doesn't really cover this, uh, but there's something I've shared with other leaders. I believe uh, there's this TED Talk speaker, Rory Baden. Uh, he talks a little bit about this, about time management. And a lot of us often in the world that we live in, we're like, we don't have enough time. We feel like we're running from place to place. Uh, we're unorganized. I've struggled with that for the longest time in my leadership. And you can search for however many tools you want to search for. And, you know, a to-do list, whether on paper, whether it's on your phone, or on your computer. Um, but time management, you can't really manage time. You can't add minutes to your 24 hours. You can't take away. We all share the same amount of hours in the day, uh, no matter where you are in the world. And so what we really mean is managing tasks. You can manage tasks. You can prioritize tasks. Uh, but time management oftentimes, oftentimes comes boils down to emotional management and self-management. Um, we can take, for example, uh, depression. Over so many clinical studies and research done over the years, uh, they've concluded that people that experience uh, depression are they're linked with lower productivity levels. And that's because people that are, if we look at depression, people that often have depression, some of their symptoms are being tired all the time. They don't eat. Uh, you know, it's really hard for them to get out of bed. They, you know, feel sluggish. And so, of course, all those things are going to cause for a less productive time in their life. And so when we're able to manage our emotions better, we're then able to be able to be better managers of our time to be able to get the things that need to get done done and be able to prioritize the things that really matter um, and just kind of shifting our mindset about that. It's not about, well, I just need to come up with a better system. It's about how are you emotionally doing that and are you able to be able to are you able to get the things done that you need to get done and be able to focus on the things that matter? But if your emotions are not stable, then everything else in your life is not going to have much stability. And you're always going to feel like you're running from point A to point B to point C all the way to point Z. And you're just going to start all over again. And so I would encourage you to kind of think through that a little bit and see where your emotions are. And when you feel that you're not able to get things done, take a moment to pause and review what are the emotions that you've been experiencing in the past 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever it may be, uh, to see what, what link you can find between your productiveness or unproductiveness with the emotions that you've been experiencing in the past 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. And I think that's key too, just when talking about depression and anxiety. And I know that a lot of this, this generation's uh, post COVID, I mean, it, it's affected yeah. so many different people. And I think the key there is like, get help. Like if you, if that's, if mm -hmm. that's where you're at and those are the emotions you're feeling like you've got to get help, um, seek a counselor, a doctor, like talk to a friend about it to help you get to the counselor or doctor. Like those are things that you need to do in order to, to feel more stable. And then that'll then drive the results that you're looking for in your life. But you really yeah. do have to deal with those things. Those aren't things that are just going to go away. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we're going to queue up a little video here that we've put together um, to kind of just reiterate some of these points, but also kind of show some practical application. Being self-aware as a leader is something that I definitely believe 
uh, is very important. And as as a component of the emotional intelligence, being self-aware of how you come across uh, to people has played a huge role in my success. I'll admit early on um, as an early GM, a younger GM rather, I didn't really uh, have the ability to connect with my team or have the understanding or grace uh, to be able to understand the, the different challenges and things that my team uh, was going through. But as I became more emotionally aware and more self-aware of my own responses and own, uh, became more self-aware of how I came across uh, to people in certain situations, um, the connectivity and my leadership grew tremendously because I was able to identify with more people and be able to understand what they were actually going through. And I truly made, think that made a difference in how people saw our organization, how people felt about working within our organization. So as I became more self-aware of my own actions and activities, so did the team have an opportunity to grow because at, me as a leader got better in the area of emotional intelligence. As a leader, there's one thing that we all have in common, and that is we will all face adversity. Self-management refers to our ability to manage our emotions despite any setbacks or stressful situations that might occur. It is important for us to realize that as a leader, we don't have to be alone. One thing that really has helped me as a leader to manage my emotions is to when I feel overwhelmed and chaotic, that I seek the advice of someone who is well sounded and has a good foundation of them controlling their own emotions. With their experience of controlling their emotions, they are able to give me the unbiased feedback in direction in a situation. Nine times out of 10, that seasoned leader has already went through the similar situation and is able to speak life in my situations. So I encourage you, don't be afraid to seek advice from someone else who's older than you or even has more tenure than you. They will often be able to help you and encourage you through your situation. All right. I believe we are on the Q&A session of the uh, our presentation. First of all, before we get started, if I can ask you to do me a favor, those of you who are on the line, could you put a one in the chat if you felt like uh, Giovanna and Nev uh, really delivered the, the, a, a great presentation on emotional intelligence as it relates to the to part one? Um, I, 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 I thank you guys so much for a, a, an incredible presentation. Also, thank you to you, Ashley, uh, for giving us um, great administrative uh, uh, back office background work. You did a great job there. Um, and I'm going to kind of maybe say a few things and I want you to put now listen to me very, very good. So this doesn't get weird. Put a two in the chat if you want to uh, have an opportunity to speak on uh, some of the things that were talked about uh, today. But but just put it in there and I'm going to call on you if that is the case for you. But I'm just going to give some commentary about what I felt like that the presentation uh, brought forth. So put a two in the chat if you want to put a comment out there. And so if I don't see any twos, I'm going to assume that we're good to go and good to continue on with our presentation. But I think, I, to, I think you were so excited that balloons came on your screen. I'm I just saw saying, that. Like, I saw that. I saw so that. I, I, it doesn't happen to me, but <laughs> it happened to you. So that's awesome. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Again, uh, put a two in the chat if you if you have any comments or any direct questions, or put your questions directly into the chat. We'll we'll address those things. But I want to kind of just there's there's something that um, I've used to fuel my leadership, and then this entire presentation kind of uh, speaks to this one phrase, and the phrase is: uh, people often do not remember what you say, but they remember how they make you, uh, how you make them feel. And so a lot of the conversation that we've had today um, in terms of, you know, being more uh, self-aware and having self-management speaks to your ability to be able to connect um, and create the connection with your team. And again, some of, I know I'm not the only leader out there that may feel some level of frustration when people on the team may not uh, remember exactly the instructions that you've given them. But I can guarantee you they will remember the way that you delivered uh, those instructions they remember how you felt a lot of the things that were said today particularly in the area when Giovanna was talking about um how you're stressed and it creates a ripple effect how you feel 
um, and the people around you, you have to be aware and understanding, particularly of those of you who are looking to become operators, if you're looking to increase your leadership, if you're looking to become you know, just a better leader overall, the way you come across to people, regardless of what's going on, um, is going to be very key in terms of you being able to process your goals. Um, I know Javana also mentioned, um, you know, there is a phrase that we used to use, hey, leave it at the door. We're in, in a lot of instances, we cannot, you know, we, we truly don't leave uh, our emotions at the door. We just have to learn how to manage those things. So I just wanted to echo those two sentiments because those are the things that really stuck out in my mind uh, during the conversation. Um, and, and Neff, you, you did a, a beautiful job as well. Don't don't think that anything that you said didn't <laughs> it didn't stick out. Oh, and but Alex, I want to I want to put a challenge out there. So I was thinking about this just now when you when you were talking about you know, how other people perceive us and my challenge. And if you could put this in the comments for me, Ashley, cause I don't, I don't have a computer in front of me, but my challenge is this week, I want you to ask five leaders that work directly under your leadership, ask five leaders, what is the emotion word that comes to mind when they think about your leadership? What's the first like gut instinct word? So when, when Javana walks in, because I lead Neff actually, so that, that this works well. When I walk up to Neff, I'm going to say, "Hey, Neff, what's the first emotion you think about whenever you think about my le my leadership of you?" And I want you to write it down. And I want you to write down to what's that word you want it to be. Right? We talked about self awareness, but also like who we want to be. If I walk up to Neff and he says, "The first emotion I think when." about your leadership of me is fear. Well, obviously I don't wanna be a fear-based leader. Like that's not who I want to be. So my question then would be, okay, Neff, what do I do on the daily as I'm leading you that causes that emotion to be the top emotion you feel about my leadership? Because nobody wants to be led by fear, right? And nobody wants to be the fear leader, the one who's bringing fear to their team. And so I would challenge you to do that because I think that's going to get give you, I, this is kind of an exercise I do with some of my clients is I tell them to go, go ask, you know, seven different people, your family, your friends, people you lead, team members, go ask them, what are your top three character traits? And sometimes they come back to me and they're like, oh, I hated that exercise. And I'm like, well, why? What were the top three words that kept reappearing? And they'll say a word and they're like, man, I don't want that to be me. I'm like, okay, you can change that. That's something you can change. And so I think as a leader, where I'm at is I'm going, okay, if the word I get from Neff is fear and the word I get from Alex is fear, and I get two leaders telling me that they, they when they see me as a leader, they're thinking, oh, fear, I, got, I can change that. I can change that, but I can't change it if I don't know, if I don't know how they feel about my leadership. So I'm challenging you to do that. And I would say, Second thing is, is if you, if you get some responses you don't like, seek out somebody who, a coach, a friend, a, a pastor, somebody who can mentor you so that you can work through those emotions because they is going to bring up emotions. I know, I know it does it for me whenever I, I hear, you know, Hey, I don't, when, when I see you in the building, I kind of hide in the corner. I'm like, okay, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not the kind of leader I want to be. That is the kind of leader I am right now. And so I can't change that, but I am going to need to work through that with somebody else. I can't work through that, those kind of things on my own. Yeah. Okay. So we, we have a question on the floor and this is a, this is a, probably a question that we, we field pretty often. Uh, Colby asks, what are some best practices to communicate urgency without coming across as stressed? And so, um, so I'll, I'll start first. Um, and one thing that I think that is a best strategy uh, or best practice in this area. Um, and Kobe, I, I hope this doesn't come across um, like I'm dodging your question. But I think that so and, and I'm assuming maybe Kobe, are, are you are you with uh, Chick-fil-A? Do you work in, in, in the with the for the world's most caring company? And if you don't, that's totally fine. But uh, yes. OK, so you do work for Chick-fil-A. So here's the thing. We pretty much know. Uh, every day, Monday through Saturday, 12 to 1 is coming, right? Peak hour is coming. We know that. That's a fact. And so I think the thing, the, one of the best things that I've noticed to help 
um, alleviate some of the way I come across in the stressful situations is how much am I leveraging the time when it's not stressful to make positive deposits in the people that I'm working with. So when those instances come up, come up where I might have to say something a little shorter or a little sharper than normal, I had I, I thinking about it like a, a like a checking account, right? Um, every time I need to make a, a a negative withdrawal in the terms of coaching a a leader or help a, a asking a, a segment of the team to to move a little faster, we'll move with more urgency. I think about what am I in good standing with them? Will this comment or will this directive put me in the negative, so to speak, from a banking standpoint? Will this put me in the negative with them uh, as it relates to our relationship as the leader, the team member? And so I, it's really, really important to me to make sure that I'm making I am making a positive impact before the, 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 the pressure comes. Again, we know what our traffic flow is. We know typically we can predict when it's going to get stressful. And typically, you know, if, if we're in tune enough with our business, we'll know when these, these, these instances um, will occur. And so it's, I think it's really important for, I think the very, very emotionally intelligent leader to say, let me leverage the time around the busy time in order to try to offset uh, the the moments where where it, it's uh, it gets busy and I might not be as wordy as I normally am. I think that's the to me that has been very effective. Like I've been able to say exactly what I needed to say, how I how I wanted to say it in those high pressure moments to individuals and, and not have the residual effect of them feeling like I don't care for them or I don't appreciate them because they know that hey, well an hour before this or two hours before this we were talking about we we were doing things that we're, we're building towards our relationship in a positive context. So I'm sure Giovanna and, and Neff and Ashley might have some additional uh, tips and practices there. But for me, the number one thing is, is making sure that you're making positive deposits um, in the lives of the people that you work with um, before it gets stressful. So when it does get stressful, they won't hold it. You know, they won't hold it against your against you, your, your character as a leader because that relationship is there. When I also queue it up with it's busy. I know that sounds crazy, but the, like when I start the, like, if I, if I need somebody to take out the trash, um, I'll say, instead of being like, Hey, some, Hey, Neff, take out the trash. I'll say, Hey, it's super busy. It really could be helpful if you take out the trash. Like that only took me two more seconds to say that. So I just kind of queue it up with like, Hey, it's, it's kind of chaotic or super busy right now. Um, and then I think the other thing is make it, make it a team statement versus a them statement. Yeah. So I don't say Neff, take out the trash. Um, I, I use also some, you know, some clean and safe environment, like some things like that. Hey, hey, can can you help us uh, help make sure that this looks cleaner for the guest? Like that, you know, just make it about the we, not about the them, or just it's like, hey, it's your fault. Um, so that's that's kind of my take on that. Just cue yeah. it up with, hey, it is busy right now, and I might say, and then sometimes too the body language, like reading other people. When I do say something and I know that it's affected somebody in a negative manner, I don't ignore it. Like I don't, I might ignore it for the next five to 10 minutes because we're, you know, super busy and things are crazy. But that next hour, I'm going to say something about it. Hey, I didn't mean that in such a harsh tone or I'm sorry. I was like, you know, knees deep in waffle fries or whatever it was. Like I, I let the person know, like, I'm sorry if that came across as harsh. And then it pretty much is a fine, you know, if you ignore it and you don't say anything about it, it's going to be a problem. So that's kind of how I deal with those situations. Well, just real quick. Cause I know we short on time. Um, I think with things that are, may not be urgent in the moment, being transparent and clear with deadlines, um, and I just saying, Hey, can you get something done? And then they didn't get it done in the time that you wanted it done. Um, and so now you seem stressed about it and now they feel like you're coming off, uh, as pushy or stressed, uh, but just from the very beginning saying, Hey, can you get this done by tomorrow at X time? And can you, can you get that done? And then at that point, if they say, no, I have all these other things to do, then you already know that that might not happen, or you can figure out who needs to do that or what you can do to help to make sure that that gets done in a timely manner. Oh yeah, for sure. Always yeah. buy win. Uh, yeah, if yeah. you see my action sheets that I give out, it says an action and a who and a buy win. That's literally how we operate because my time frame is today. Like everyone knows that. Like when I say, Hey, I need you to do this or Hey, can you get this done? And they say, yes. I'm like, that means today. But now I just say, 
by when. <laughs> and that really helps me not get frustrated and emotional and upset. Yeah, no, definitely. Very good commentary. So it is nine o'clock. Um, and so this would conclude uh, the lead better. Um, number one, we want to thank you guys so much for participating in this lead better. We've got some really good commentary. Um, we, we, we hope that this content is, is, um, beneficial to all who attend again, this will happen monthly. So the next lead better will be March 24th. Typically we like to do the last Sunday of the month, but March has five Sundays and the fifth Sunday is Easter. And so we, we, out of respect for that, uh, that, that holiday, we're moving the lead better to the Sunday before. So be on the lookout for registration information for that. Um, if you want to stick around, now you don't have to, like I said, this will conclude our, our session, but we want to make a special offer to those of you who uh, say, man, you know what? I like this presentation. I hear that you guys do some coaching and I want to see uh, how can I get connected with you guys beyond just the lead better. Hang around. Um, and, and as we officially close, this everyone if you don't want to participate in that you're you're free to go for sure but if you want to hear about our special offer please stay on the line uh at this point uh and to Alex continue well if anybody would like to stay on and has any questions feel free like uh you can stay on open your camera and talk to us we'd love to to chat with you as well yeah, no, most definitely. So, uh, so the, again, that concludes our time. Uh, if you are, uh, you know, needing to get off for whatever reason, um, definitely you can exit. Um, and this time will be reserved for our special offer. If you are wanting to, uh, continue on a, a conversation with us. So, um, I'm gonna give the people who want to drop out a few moments to drop out if they so choose. Um, and I'll get started here in a few moments. And I'm going to I'm going to safely say everyone who's wanting to leave is is gone and everybody else who wants to stay is here. So now uh, we're going to talk about our offer. So as we have mentioned, this is the TPE where the pivot experience where our goal um, is to help leaders pivot into their next. You know, my name is Alex. As I've expressed earlier, um, I have over 20 years of experience working for the world's most caring company. That is Chick-fil-A. Uh, myself, my wife, we've had an opportunity to open some of our own businesses outside of our work at Chick-fil-A, and this is one of them. Um, I've had the pleasure and the joy of working with uh, th these three individuals who are on the line, Ashley, Neff, and uh, Giovanna. And we all are uh, leaders who are focused on helping other people tackle the challenges that they have existing in their in their lives, personally and professionally. Um, if you don't know, there's a stat out there that says that 80% of people who receive any level of business coaching is uh, more likely to be more confident and to be more competent in what they do um, as a leader. And so this is why we do what we do. And we feel that we are uh, different from any other coaching entity because we have all of us currently are leading and doing the things that we're telling you to do. Uh, so don't don't think that we're on the line right now and we're and we're giving you this information on emotional intelligence and 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 we're not actually ourselves doing the very things that we that we're talking about. Um, uh, we we believe in eating our own cooking. Uh, I don't think that as a if if you ate from a chef and the chef said, "Hey, I've never." I've never, I've never tasted that before. Here you go. Here's a plate. Uh, I don't know how confident you are in that versus someone who says, no, I, I eat this every day. I, 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 this is a part of my uh, diet each and every day. I know what this is. And so the things that we deliver to you guys as, as it relates to um, uh, the lead better, anything that happens in Leader Square, which I'll talk about that in a second. And if you were one of our coaching clients, these are things that we have real life application and we understand what the success rates are on those things. And so Typically, the way our coaching model works is you would go to our website, which is www.tpenow.com. This is how most of you guys were able to register for uh, this event, um, and you would uh, sign up for the, the coaching subscri subscription service. And that is $200 a month, and what you will get with that is you'll get uh, at a minimum now. Uh, there's people doing more than this, but at a minimum, you will receive two coaching sessions a month, uh, depending on what your goals are, depending on uh, the flexibility and the and the and the um, the time that your coach 
your assigned coach may have with you, uh, they may be able to offer you more sessions that that within that that pricing. But for the most part, you get two sessions and then you get access to Leader Square and then you'll get discounts in, on any courses or any other events that we do. Uh, actually, right now we're in the process of finalizing two courses. So if you signed up with coaching for us, it's likely that you'll be able to either get those courses for free or at a, at a heavy discount. Uh, so there's benefits to uh, being a part of our coaching uh, mechanism. And we're offering for those of you who are on this call today uh, that one month totally free. So if you're uh, on the fence or if you're skeptical of, you know, I don't think I need a coach or, or I don't believe in that. Uh, but I like what I heard today. I like what you guys are bringing to the table. I want to see if this is something I want to do. Uh, we're definitely all, we're going to offer you a free month. And so if you could do me a favor in the chat, if you want to take advantage of that free month, just put uh, a three in the chat and then we'll contact you via email on how to go about doing that. So if you say, man, I want to, uh, I want to take advantage of the coaching that you guys have. I believe that you can help me get to the next level. Um, I know coaching has become a thing, a buzzword in, uh, the ranks of Chick-fil-A. And so if this, if you want to do that with us, put a three in the chat, we'll definitely, um, get you some information on how to facilitate and to, um, and how to take advantage of that free month. All right. We got someone who wants to do that. Excellent. I love that. Um, if you think that you're not ready for coaching and you just want to continue to be connected with us. Uh, so there's a, uh, there's a subscription also for leader square. Again, if you, you take advantage of the, uh, it's a subscription, a requirement. Uh, no, uh, Tasha isn't, we can talk about that, uh, in a little bit more detail. Personally, if you want to do it month by month, we can definitely take a look at, um, um, tailoring something that will work for you as it relates to what your goals are. So, um, and, and, I'll say this, we're leaders ourselves and we understand that, 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 uh, you just have different needs. And so we can talk through what that looks like for sure. Um, but again, if you're not thinking that the, the direct one-to-one -one coaching isn't the thing for you, you can definitely get connected with us on leader square. Uh, like I said, there is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of, uh, free resources that are available to you in leader square. Um, a lot of content, uh, let's see here. I apologize. What is Leader Square versus these group sessions? Okay, so leaders. Okay, so uh, I'll 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 explain th this really quickly. Uh, Leader Square is what the equivalent. A lot of you guys saw this messaging probably in the Future Operators Group, or you probably saw it in the Chick Fil A Directors Group on Facebook. Uh, this is an extension of of what those groups are formed to be, but just on our own platform. Um, so with it being on our own platform, it gives you access to when we put courses out, when we put blogs out, when we put other uh, pieces of information out there, you'll have direct access to it being that you're in the group. Um, it, the, the group is facilitated in on this app called Spaces uh, that's produced by Wix. And so it kind of, it, it, in, in my mind, it takes you away from the noise and the, the distractions of Facebook because you can go, you can be a part of a group on Facebook, but then you know you can easily get distracted going on going back to your timeline, going back to um, uh, different things that aren't uh, necessarily pertinent to your leadership journey. So we want to try to keep that information separate. And the one-on-one -on -one sessions would be, you would schedule a time with myself or Ashley or Neff or um, Giovanna, whoever you are, are wanting to work with or assigned to work with. And then and then they would tailor an hour of time specifically to the goals that you have. Leader Square isn't a specific mechanism. It's just more so uh, we talk about things from a thematic standpoint that are a reflection of the lead betters. But this is the, the lead betters, a general leadership conversation, whereas the the one on one sessions are more tailored towards uh, the things that you're wanting to do. Awesome. Thank you. And I will uh, say this to uh, Colby and I think Colby and Tasha are still here. Yeah, I think uh, just so you know, like all of us are in coaching as well. Like I in order for me to be able to do what I do, I have to be con consistently pursuing more. And so I, I honestly believe that it's probably what has really grown my leadership over the last two years. I've been in coaching with different coaches over the last two years, and it has changed the trajectory of the way I can lead my team. And so I just, I think it's so important. I love working with, with leaders. I 
um, what kind of what Alex was saying was I have, you know, we have coaching goals. We have things that we're working through for three months. And that's kind of how I look at it on a three month by three month basis. And that's what they're doing as well. Um, and some of those goals are around, you know, getting into LDP or um, some of those goals around personal or professional growth or some of those goals are around, hey, this is like what I'm supposed to be doing in my restaurant. And these are the three goals that I have. How can like, here's where I'm at. Here's where we want to go. What do you think we need to do to get there? And so like, we also give resources, a whole bunch of resources on, on different areas of the business. And so there's a lot that goes into it. That's what makes us different is, is that we do, we are we're all working in the restaurant. And so we do restaurant industry. And so we do know what's going on with those things. And so I, I think that's kind of what sets our, our business apart. And, and just to add to that, you know, um, for additional context, it's, you know, and, and I may be uh, share, oversharing here, um, you know, you, someone asked us where we're from. We're we're from Texas, and thank you for answering that question, Neff. Um, and, and we're from South Texas, and so uh, Ashley and I uh, serve the same operator, and we are responsible for facil facilitating, uh, you know, over twenty million dollars in sales volume. So is uh, Neff and Giovanna. They're facilitating over twenty million dollars in annual sales volume as well. And so we've got an idea of what it takes to run a uh, high performing. Um, uh, restaurant organization. And so if for uh, Tosh and for Kobe, those of you who are left on the line, if you guys are pursuing being an operator or pursuing um, just, again, increasing your leadership, I believe we have the tools and we have the resources and the mindset that will help you get there. Um, the four of us uh, that are in this in this company, we're all four, four very different. We all have different um, life perspectives. But the one thing that I think that unites us is that we care about people and we care about the, the growth and, and the development of others. And so I think that's what we're going to really zone into. And not we're not going to be uh, touchy feely and cliche and just going to tell you the things that you want to hear. I believe that we specialize in listening to, I think we're all emotionally intelligent enough to listen to what you're saying, what you're not saying, and being able to challenge you uh, to be able to get to the to the next space and next phase in your leadership. And so uh, from Oklahoma, we're about in Oklahoma, Tasha, if you if you don't mind, I did a, a, a grand opening or two in Oklahoma. Uh, and I wonder if, I mean, okay, okay see, okay, see. cool. Okay. See, awesome, awesome. Y'all, well, I'm about to say from a basketball perspective, y'all look I'm pretty actually, good right now. Yeah, listen, they're about to go to Broken Bow for a, a couple of days. So I don't know how I don't know where that's at in relation to OKC, but one to Broken Bow soon. I've heard it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So no, definitely. So so Kobe and and Tasha, thank you guys so much for for hanging around. Uh, we will get back to um you all very soon about getting set up with a discovery call. Uh, that's going to be our that's basically our intake. We kind of get an idea of what your goals are, where you are in your leadership, what you've done so far as a leader. Um, and we'll we usually use that information to be able to um connect you with somebody who we felt like, well, of the four of us who we feel like it's the best fit for you. Um, and so, no, if, if there's nothing else, man, we are, let's see, I'm about two hours away. Okay. I don't know if she's going to come see you, but she might. <laughs> she I might, might be able to do that, Tasha. I'll, after, after, uh, after Alex connects with you, then we'll, we'll, we might be able to set something up. Make sure you put your phone number in there and I can be able to text you. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I'd love nah. to come see your restaurant because just so you know, that's another part of what I want to do. I do help other restaurants and I've been to several different operators in different yeah. cities and I go there and help them with all things Chick-fil-A. So, yeah. So I'd love to to meet up with you if I if I can make that happen. So. Yeah, most definitely. So uh, let's see here. Let me see here. Let me screenshot that. Make sure we got it. Bam. All right. So no, thank you guys so much. Again, uh, please be on the lookout for the next lead better. Um, if you guys felt that this was valuable, do not hesitate to invite other people. Um, we love to see more people come. And if you guys know of anybody who this information can be beneficial to, uh, please do not be afraid to uh, let them know. Say, hey, go over to tpenow.com and get and, and at minimum join the site so you can get the emails, you can get the correspondence and the communication uh, from us as we have more events. Uh, we're actually planning on uh, increasing our events. And plus, if you are working with, I know Tasha, you said you're not a part of Chick-fil-A yet exactly, but Kobe, you are with Chick-fil-A. And if you have any uh, any Hispanic or Spanish speaking individuals, 
our our uh, TPE Espanol is fantastic. I'll tell you firsthand. I'm I'm seeing the growth of some leaders that um, started at, at they they are much better than what they now than what they are when they started. And so um, I, I I definitely contribute that a lot of that to Neff's expertise in that area. So if you got some leaders that can take advantage of that, we'll love to be able to take them in. And um, yeah. So that's all I've got. Ashley, Neff, Giovanna, do you have any other closing remar remarks? Nope. Thank you all for joining. And feel, and feel free to invite some friends next time. For well, sure. Thanks again. I look forward to it. All right. Y'all have hey, a good night. It, all right. Bye, guys. Bye.